Hi there! In this tutorial, I will show you the ultimate guide on how to create a Rust server such as installation, how to set up Oxide, configuration and customization. Let's get straight into it. The first thing that you're gonna want to do is to go to rocketnode.com, go to game hosting and click on Rust server hosting. When thinking about opening your Rust server, a very crucial step consists in deciding what hosting plan you'll need to own based on your expected player count, as that might come pretty load heavy on the server. On another note, using something like UMOD, or better called Oxide, is crucial for having plugins on your server to keep players engaged, which requires additional server power to have a smooth experience. Guys, if you need help deciding what type of hosting you should pick, never hesitate to open a ticket to our support team available at you at any point, via our support system on the website or the Discord tickets. Secondly, a stable and continuous internet connection is essential to our community to have non-stop gameplay available to your players 24-7 every day of the year. Our unlimited bandwidth also plays a huge role in having no lag on your server, as a slow and unstable connection can ruin everything on your server. For this example, we're gonna go with uh, 12GB of RAM. You can, call it, you can click on the slider and choose 12GB of RAM, select the location you want, in this case we're gonna go with London, and you're gonna be sent to the billing page. Here you can choose to pay monthly, quarterly, semi-annually or annually. Let's go with monthly. The panel name you just put whatever name you want, for this example, your rocket node test. And this is really important and you have to pay attention to it. In case you want dedicated ports, you'll have to pay five extra more dollars. Now you may be asking, what are dedicated ports? Basically, if you want a server to play only with your friends or record content, other things like that, then you don't need a dedicated port. But if you want to grow a community, a 2x server, a vanilla server, and to have the server on the list for other players around the world to see, you are gonna need a dedicated port. In this example, let's say we're making a community, so yes, we are gonna go with dedicated ports, which is an extra $5. Now, all you'll have to do is to press on the continue button and pay for the server. After paying for the server, go to panel.rocketnode.net and you shall see your Rust server. Just click on it. And there you have it, this is your Rust server, it's ready to go. In case you don't know what Oxide is, Oxide is a modding platform for a Rust server intended to be used along with plugins that can help you moderate and modify gameplay to your liking. Here at Rocket Node, we offer you an easy and fast way to install Oxide on your Rust server. All you'll have to do is turn your server off, go to Server Startup, and here you'll see Oxide mod. Just press on it, it will turn blue, and it's this simple to have Oxide on your server. In order to connect to your Rust server, all you have to do is go to the server console, press the start button, and give it some minutes. Bear in mind that Rust servers take quite some time to start, just because they have to connect to the Rcom password, which usually takes around 3-4 minutes only for that stage of the starting process. I'll be back when the server is started and ready to go. Now that it says that the server is online, all you'll have to do is copy the IP address, go into Rust, press F1 to open the console and type connect, and then paste the IP address. Now, as you can see, you are already connecting to your Rust server. Give it some seconds and there you have it. You're gonna be on your own Rust server created by you. In case you want to customize your server, and by that I mean the server name, the description of it, the world size and everything like that. From the server console tab, go straight to server startup, but be careful, make sure your server is turned off be before changing anything. Server startup. For the name, I recommend putting a name that's gonna attract a lot of people. For example, if your server is from the US, it's a 2x and it webs bi-weekly. I recommend doing something like, in this example, US Rocket Node 2x bi-weekly. And because this example server is not wiping any BPs, and you get all of them from the beginning, I'll just say no BPs and noob friendly, because it's meant for new players. This is a good server name. If a player is looking for this type of server, he will for sure join yours. Now, if you go to the level tab, I recommend not changing this because this is when add this is used when adding a custom map which I will show you later in another video. 
For the description, just try to explain your server a bit more. I've said brand new Rust server, best hosting quality, because you know, it's hosted at Rocket Node, and noob friendly. You can add way more things in the description, but for this example, this is what I'm gonna go for. For the URL tab, I recommend putting your Discord link, all the big servers from Rust and communities to this in order to also attract their players to their Discord community, trying to get them engaged in their community's ecosystem. For the world size, this is how big you want the map to be. If your server is maxed at 100 slots, so you're gonna, you're gonna need a small map. A small map in my opinion is considered 2.5k, which means 2.5 kilometers. If you want 200 players on your server, then you can go for a 3.5k map. But bear in mind, the bigger your map is, the more performance your server is gonna require. Just bear that in mind, please. As for the world seed, again, if you don't have a specific map in mind, I don't recommend changing this. If you want to look for a specific map, for example, that has outpost in the middle, I'll link Rust maps down in the description and you can go over there and have fun with it. Max players, in this example, it's set to 40. Here at Rocket Node, we don't, we don't ask for more money if you need more slots. So you are free to put how many players you want. In this example, let's do 200, even though the word size is small. The server image is the header image for the top of your server listing whenever a player clicks on your server to connect to. Archon password. We recommend as soon as you get your server to change your Archon password. In this example, we're gonna do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The Archon password is really helpful and you should never share it with a random person because it used, it's used, uh, because it's used to connect to external programs that can manage your Rust servers. For server logo, again, this is the circular server logo for the Rust Plus app. You can put whatever you want here, you just have to link the image. For custom map URL, don't touch it for now. This is gonna be on how to install a custom map in Rust. And these are all your server configurations. It's this easy. I recommend also adding to putting here to additional arguments. I recommend doing plus silent dash crashes this is uh, this is quite important as it adds uh, a save interval to your server in case it crashes adding admins to your server is crucial so you can moderate your server and test features before you push them to the public let's let me show you how to add an owner and how to add an admin in both cases, you'll have to go to steamid.io and put the desired persons you want to give the role a profile link. Press lookup. And here you're gonna see steamid64. Just press on the little icon to copy it. Go back to your Rust console. To give yourself owner or another person's owner, just type owner ID and then copy paste the steam64 ID. Now, let's say you want to give someone an admin. All you'll have to do is oxide that user group, add, paste in the Steam64 ID and type admin. It's this simple. That's it. Upon joining your server, you should have all the default permissions of an admin to manage your server. Remember, permissions are an important topic of your server as it gives or revokes access to specific commands or events for your player base. This is a complex topic that we might cover in a future video to help you out with them. Installing plugins for Rust is a simple and quick process with little knowledge required to do. I'll guide you with a step-by-step -step process to make sure that you'll be doing it the right way so you don't encounter any problems. First, let's select a plugin. In this case, I'm gonna be using the Vanish plugin, which allows players with the permission to become truly invisible. Download it by pressing on the download button Remember where you save it, this is really important. Then go to your Rust panel, you can close the Vanish tab. Go to File Manager, Oxide, Plugins, and press the Upload button. At Rocket Node, it's really simple to install plugins, as we are giving you the option to install them via our website panel. Upload button, and select the Vanish plugin. It should be vanish.cs. Press open. And there you have it. Now if you go back to your server console, you should see that the plugin is loaded. Remember, 
To give permissions to someone, you'll have to look on the plugins page and see which permissions you want the players or the admins to have. It's this simple to install a plugin. You just have to do this process multiple times in order to install more and more plugins. Reinstalling your server might be necessary at any point if you need a fresh start of your files or simply something isn't working. However, be careful as this setting can remove your files and you might lose your progress you made on your server. Let me show you how to do it. Go to panel.rocketnode.net, go on your Rust server, then navigate to server settings and here you can see the big red button, reinstall server. Click on it and it's gonna ask you to confirm it. You just press yes, reinstall server and it's not gonna take more than one minute and you have a freshly installed Rust server. Data backups are essentially duplicates of important files or information that are stored in a separate location from the original data. By creating and regularly updating backups, you can ensure that in the event of a disaster, you'll still have access to your important files and data. Let me show you how to create one. Head over to rocketnode.net on our panel and select the Rust server, go to backups, press the create backup button. Let's give it a name. Let's say first no, let's do rocket node backup. Ignored files here, you can play with the settings, but in our case, I'm just gonna use the only the name option. Press start backup. And it's this easy. We suggest creating regular backups on your server every week, maybe. So in case you change some plugins, the map, server settings, additional startup arguments, you can always have them in, say, in case of a crash. In conclusion, setting up your own Rust server can be a rewarding and enjoyable experience, allowing you to create a customized gaming experience for yourself and your friends. By following the steps outlined in this video, you can have your own server up and running in no time. Remember to carefully consider your server hosting options and to regularly backup your data to avoid any potential data loss. This is it for the video. If you guys have any questions regarding this tutorial or in general, you can go to our Discord server which will be linked down in the description and our support team will help you more than happily. Until then, have a great day and see you in the other video guys.